In today's episode, I discuss, is flash photography for wildlife ethical? Is it necessary to have lodge experience if you want to become a photographic safari guide? And how to get sponsorships? All of this coming up in episode 46, which starts now. Hi everybody, my name is Jerry, I'm from Wild Eye. This is episode number 46 of my wildlife photography Q&A video series in which I answer your wildlife photography questions. So, after banging out a whole bunch of episodes a couple of weeks ago, it gone quiet again, travel. That's what we do and that's what we do a lot of. So, the last while I've been out in the field for a bit, we had our wildlife photography seminar at Toby Sands, which if you follow Instagram, you'll know was amazing. Um, then I'd stayed on in the sands for a bolt-on safari, which was also great. The leopards came out to play very nicely. And um, yeah, then back in the week, uh, back in the office for a week now, and then in two days' time on Sunday, I leave for Londolozi again for a private guided safari. Next week, actually, the entire team is out in the field, so going very well, loving it, lots to do. So um, yeah, apologies for not getting the videos out as often as I would like. When I come back from Londos, though, um, I am in the office, I think, for about three weeks. So hopefully to get to number 50. Can't wait. I want to get to number 50 of these videos. Keep the questions coming. Anyway, um, I've got about four or five questions here lined up. Let's get right into it. Umar on Snapchat asks, what are the key aspects to shooting a silhouette? Does the subject need to be fixed with a special adjustment brush in Lightroom? Umar, I think the first thing we need to address here is just, does it need to be fixed in Lightroom? No. If you're going to approach it that way, I think you're going to lose. The first starting point is the key to shooting a silhouette is shooting the silhouette. If you mess it up in camera, you can brush all the hell you want. It's not going to fix anything. So the key, the key factors to shooting the silhouettes in the field, in camera, is you need to look at the type of lighting. To get a silhouette, which is the dark, dark, dark subject with light around it, yeah? You guys know what I'm talking about? Is you need strong backlighting. You need to then expose for the light to make the light nice and rich and dark, which will then also keep the silhouette black. Now, for you to try and, try and fix these things after, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, you can play up and down on the black and white sliders, but to go in, out, and I think it's a mindset problem. If you go out with a mindset of, I'm going to fix this afterwards, and I've done blogs on this, guys, go and read it. It's like a recurring theme, is get it right in camera and then enhance in Lightroom. Don't fix in Lightroom, enhance in Lightroom. So first thing you need, Umar, again, in the field, try and get strong backlighting on the subject and... I mean, that's pretty much it. Get strong backlighting exposed for the light at the back, which will underexpose the subject. Another thing is, I see a lot of people on Instagram also post silhouettes, and you can't see what the hell it is. So if you're shooting a specific subject, you need to make sure that anybody in the world, even if they've never seen this animal, will know what it is. So for example, a giraffe is the easiest one to silhouette because even if nobody's seen them before, they know what a giraffe looks like. So the silhouette of that long neck on the plains of Africa is very recognizable. For an elephant, what would it be? The side, the trunk maybe, the curling of the trunk, the two tusks, the ears. Think of what it is when you're shooting silhouettes that defines that subject and make sure you show that in the final image. Once you have the image, then enhance in Lightroom Umar. Don't fix. Titan's mom asked on Instagram, what lens would you recommend for a beginner using a Canon EOS Rebel T5i? My favorite thing to photograph is wildlife, but I don't know what lens I should invest in to get really great shots. Titan Bomb, thank you, and I like that you're going into wildlife photography. Now, the question, and if you follow my Snapchat, guys, last night I did a big, big story, Snapchat story, on safaris, how to choose operators, what to look for, and how to plan a safari. The same applies to when you start looking at which lenses to buy. The first thing you have to ask yourself is, what do I want to photograph? Now, you've answered this for yourself already. You want to photograph wildlife, check. So the next step is, what is your budget? Now, for an all-round wildlife lens, and this is again, we've, we've said this in the past, is go for something that has versatility, and you're not gonna buy a 600 millimeter F4 at however many thousand dollars off the bat. Go and buy something, if you're shooting the T5i, go and get 100 to 400. The new one is phenomenal, beautiful lens, and it gives you a focal range from 100 to 400. For wildlife, it's fantastic, absolutely amazing. Um, 
if you want to push the budget up a bit, go for a 70 to 200, 2.8, and then get two converters with it. But then you're going to have to chop and change a lot more. There's things like the, the aperture will vary each time you put a different converter on. So Titan Bomb, I would go with 100 to 400. It's the best starting lens for the camera you have for you to go and explore the world of wildlife photography to see if you actually like it. And then, once you start getting into it and you start seeing what kind of images you take, you can decide, ooh, I want a longer lens, or I need a bigger aperture, or maybe I need a wider lens, I want to do more environment type stuff. And then you can go buy those lenses and then come on a safari and I'll show you how to use them. Ganesh asked on Instagram, is flash photography ethical in your books? It's subjective to the type of animal and hold, but just to know what your take is with regards to this often debated subject amongst our community. This question can be done in a couple of ways. I mean, before we go down the route of whether it's ethical, I can ask you the same question. Look, I don't own a gun at this stage, but is a gun dangerous? No, on its own not. It's how you use it that makes it dangerous. Yeah? So, for you to ask, is flash photography ethical? It's going to depend 100% on how the photographer who's controlling that flash manages the process. Some guys are just absolutely clueless and they will keep on flashing again and again and again. Now think for yourself, if you're in the dark at a dinner table for example and some idiot comes and he wants to take pictures and he flashes you again and again and again and again, you're also going to get pissed off and you want to beat him up. The same goes for animals. You don't want to influence their natural behavior by flashing them too much and making them either starting to move away from a scene, attack, heaven forbid, um, uh, influence hunting behavior, whatever it is. So I personally do not have an issue with flash photography for wildlife. I mean, I read a inter very interesting blog off Twitter. I cannot for the life of me remember where I saw it, uh, which website, but it was off Twitter, a link. I'll try and find it. it was the guys did a study on how scientifically light, flashlights, affects the retina and the tapetum sedum of animals. And the bottom line was, we don't actually know, but common sense prevails. So it's pretty much what we're saying here. So flash photography, I don't have a problem with as long as it's done in an ethical manner. Is it ethical as a whole? I don't know. Ask the photographer who's doing it. That said, there's also a whole thing which links to this of spotlight photography. I know some guys are very against it. But I'm in, I'm in the same ship that if it's done ethically, it doesn't influence behavior and it's applied only to certain subjects, then there's no problem. You see, go and look at my Instagram feed. I'll link it down here for you. There's a whole bunch of images a, couple, a week or so ago where we did a lot of low light and spotlight photography during our seminar on the Sabi Sands. Um, it was specifically two male lions on a kill. There was nothing else around. They were feeding. And the guy to manage the spotlights did so correctly in that it didn't affect the behavior. It didn't stress the animal. Nature carried on whether we were there or not. And we were able to work our shots accordingly. That I think is great. That's also one of the reasons I'm going to Londolosi this week is one of my clients wants to get specifically big cat shots, don't we all? And also then cats in that low light spotlight area. I know for example, in Europe, uh, spotlight is a big no-no, but they bait stuff. They're happy for baiting bears, owls, whatever. On this side of the, of, of the ocean, or down south here, we don't have that much of an issue with a spotlight as long as it's done correctly and ethically. There it is. But baiting is a no-no. I will never ever bait an animal because that to me influences its behavior. Discussion could go on and on in circles, but that's where I'm going to leave it. Just to pull back a step now, the reason I don't do, and for those of you that have been on safari with me, you'll know that we don't do flash photography. It's very specific. You have to now I'm talking technical. You have to expose the camera for, for the background and the flash for the foreground. Now, I can't do this with a group of three to six clients because I can then not pay as much attention to each of them as I want. Also, John at the back might flash and mess up Mary's image in the front. There's just so many variables. On a private guided trip, I can look at it. But on a general photo safari or just you going on a game drive, it is a very tough call to pull off correctly. Um, the the follow-up question, which maybe goes to the previous one, would also be how to process those effectively because there's a white balance issue. But that can be a discussion for another time. So, back to basics. Do I have a problem with it ethically? No, it depends on how it's done and how it's executed by the photographer in question. Asti asks on Snapchat, is a few years lodge experience as a guide a necessity before entering the photographic safari industry? Hmm. 
As to this thing keeps on coming up in different forms. So, is it necessary to have logic experience to become a photographic guide or work in the photographic guiding industry? Similar questions would be, um, I like wildlife photography, I would like to get into the wildlife photography industry. Other ones would be, please attach, see my CV, I've been guiding for a year and a half, I love wildlife photography and I want to come and work for you. I think there's a very, and let's do this once again, I think there's a very big misconception about what it is and what it takes to run a proper and professional and successful photographic safari company. If you guys follow my Snapchat last night, and also this is not the first time this has come up, I think there are too many people in this industry that are doing it for the wrong reasons. So, we'll get to that in a moment. Do you need logic experience? You know what, the, the reality is, Asti, there is zero, no qualifications necessary to do this. You might not make bigger success of it then because you're going to struggle, but there is no governing body, and I would love to see one, there is no governing body like FAGASA, the Field Guide Association of South Africa, that you have to sign up if you want to be a field guide, that manages this side, my side of the industry. There's a specific reason that all of the wild eye guides are very, very well qualified and FAGASA registered and all those good things. There's a very, very good reason why every single one of us that run trips has been in the lodge industry and you've paid your dues, you've been in that guiding seat for years and years, not two or three years, we're talking eight to 12 years, we've guided people, we've worked in lodges because the hospitality industry, it is what we do. I'm not in the photographic industry if I wanna cut it to basics, I'm in the service industry. I'm servicing people on their holiday. I'm making sure they get from the plane to the transfer, from the transfer to the plane, from the plane to the lodge. I help them with the setup of the camera. Service, service, service. And then out in the field, it's not about my photography. I'm gonna say this again, because there are many photographers hosting safaris, shooting for themselves. And that is very, very wrong. And the problem with it is, apart from being a disservice to the clients, guides who, they're very good guides. I met some of them now on the Sabi Sats. Great, great guys and great guides. They wanna now move into the photography side of it because it's apparently more romantic. It's just as much, if not more work, because you're not just worrying about what's happening on the vehicle. I'm worrying about, are they checked in for their plane back home? Why a lot, now to, I'm going down a rabbit hole, as to, to pull it back a bit, to, is large experience necess a necessity? No, but I would very, very, very highly recommend it because if you understand how a lodge works, it's not just about what happens at the lodge, it's the transfers in, the gate fees, the, uh, what am I looking at here? The dietary requirements, the special requests. This one doesn't want to be in the car with that one and, 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 and it spirals out. If you know how to deal with that and you have experience with it, then yes, it will most definitely add value. You see, I think, to be a proper photographic guide, and I'm very proud of what we've created here with Wild Eye, is it's a funny, it's the whole is bigger than all, the sum of all the parts. So there's guiding experience, there's teaching experience, there's photography experience, all of those comes together and there's an X factor that makes it work. Do you have the X factor? I don't know, maybe, maybe. But yes, lodge experience can help and definitely does. Um, it's, you will be surprised at the amount of CVs we get, and I've said this again and again and again, at the office saying, hey, I wanna come and work for you, here's my top 12 images. I don't give a shit whether you can take good images because if you're gonna be a photographic guide, you should be guiding photographically and helping your clients get the images. That's where a lot of people make the mistakes. Now, if you've been in the lodge industry and you've been there for a long time, you would have at least understood what it means to take the guest's requirements, needs, expectations, assimilate that and then produce a product and a service that meets and exceeds that. So yes, I do think the lodge thing is valuable. Just for some of you young guys as well, if you're keen to get into the industry, don't, don't let me scare you off. I think it's great and it's a phenomenal thing to be in. It's fucking hard work, make no mistake. To make a business of this is a shitload of work, off, off the bat. But if you're into it, it definitely can work. But don't go and look at people like myself and Marlon and Andrew and the Wild Eye team and think that you're gonna jump in there. We're on chapter 20 of our story. You might be on chapter four. Don't be scared to pay your due, guys. Do the work. Get stuck in, build a brand for yourself online, for your photography, start adding value to your guests, learn the back end of the lodge. All of those things will eventually make those pieces for you to become a photographic guide. 
Yes, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal industry. I love what I do, but if you're gonna get into it, make sure it's for the right reasons. Kirsty asked on Snapchat, I wonder if you had more general advice on making the move to professional with areas such as photography, filming, etc. I have all the enthusiasm in the world, but if I pay for everything off my own back, I'll never get out. What do I do with a hobby that will encourage people to want to hire me or sponsor a trip? Kirsty, wow, this is a tough one actually because I want to go off on a specific rant here, but I'm going to try and just temper it in a bit. There's two things. Number one, so many people start in this industry and after a year and a half or two years of shooting, they go and approach Nikon and Canon and say, hey, I'm amazing, I've got 200 followers, please sponsor me. Okay, um, I'm not sponsored. Marlon is not sponsored, Andrew's not sponsored. So what makes a lot of people out there think because they've taken two or three good images, they need to be sponsored. And then, let me just digress for a moment, it's quite sad that those people then, and you see it on Facebook and Instagram all the time, they whore out themselves and they work so badly to try and say, oh, I've got the new Canon, I've got the new Canon, I've got the new Canon, or Nikon, Nikon, oh, it's not a brand thing. It's very sad. So, for you to say, how can you get out there in order to have someone pay for a trip or to sponsor you? God, it would be very nice if someone were to pay for a trip for me, but then they own you. They've paid for your trip, they're gonna want something in return. So don't stop your thought pattern at, I wanna get paid to go on a trip. Think of what can you produce after the fact. Now, that's not the important thing. The important thing here is, is you say, how can you get out there if you have to pay for it all yourself? Now, this is something that's come up again and again as well, and it has to do with just two things. How can I get myself out there as a wildlife photographer? How can I start as the industry as a photographer? Previous question, how can I get into the industry as a photographic guide? Two things guys, number one, the internet, and number two, your mobile device. That is it. Start learning how to use the two and get into people's faces in a good way, yeah? Get into people's faces, start engaging with people, start communicating with people, start adding value to people, something I can't say enough, because how can you expect, if this is really something you want, to be sponsored to go on trips and to get sponsorship from everybody, for anybody to even think of sponsoring you if you've done nothing, if nobody knows about you, yeah? How are people gonna know about you? You're gonna create an, a kick-ass Instagram account where you're adding value, adding great images, you're entertaining people, you're adding value, there, there it is again, you're educating, you build up a following of 50,000, then you might be in a position to start saying to companies, listen, uh, I would like you to sponsor me, but now I think the other way around. I can help you, not how can you help me. That's a big thought pattern a lot of people need to understand. So engage, start creating something. The whole, you don't need a lot of money to start wildlife photography. Like one of the previous questions, loan a kit for a weekend, go out, shoot a portfolio, take that images, do something with it. Facebook, blog post, write medium articles, do a little YouTube video on your thing, do Instagram, create a Snapchat account and snap the shit out of it for a weekend, but start creating something that will make you attractive, number one, should you wanna get the sponsors, and two, eventually, will put you in a position to choose what you wanna do. It's the whole, I think people miss the plot when they start going in for sponsors, I can't come because nobody wants to sponsor me. <sighs> ah, it, it misses the point. If you stay true to what you do, if you stay true to the reason you want to become this thing, whether it's a professional videographer, a professional photographer, stay true to it and do it for as long and as hard as you can. Stop worrying about the money, just try and do just that and do it as best as you can and utilize the internet and social media in order to get your message out there. Things will happen. People give up too soon. I mean, I've been in this guiding and stuff game now for approaching like 13, 14 years something, from the very beginning to now, yeah? People do a year and a half and they start demanding sponsorships and, oh, I want, I want a bag from Click and I want a Canon from Nikon and whatever, whatever. Stop it, just focus on the basics, work as hard as you can, stay true to your craft and good things will happen, I promise you that. Has to, it has to. And then use the internet and social media. So, wow.
almost went off there, but I'm gonna keep it tight for now. That's what I have for you. Okay, five questions, guys. It is Friday today, so this will be up later today. And like I said, I'm off to Londolozi on Sunday for a week. I'll be back in the office around the 3rd or the 4th of May. Keep the questions coming. I have some lined up for episode 47, 8, 9. And then hopefully I want to get to 50 before mid-end of May. Maybe we can do some giveaways and prizes for the 50th episode. Good idea. Anyway, want to quickly just give all of you guys on Snapchat a big shout out as well. I'm loving the engagement. The, the stuff we're talking about, snapping on the side, the interaction, the questions, it is phenomenal. And even if you guys don't follow me, just go and get onto Snapchat. For, for, you want to build your brand, Kirsty, start there. Right now, hottest thing you can do. But it is a phenomenal communication and storytelling platform. Go and give it a bash. Oh, on that, if you're on Snapchat, remember, you can't search for people in Snapchat. You can use an app called Ghost Codes, or you can. Nice one, to, worth checking out. Anyway, uh, lots of work to do. I've got a private tutorial Lightroom later this morning, uh, and then prepping for my safari this weekend. Thanks for following along, guys. If you enjoy these videos, tag someone, like it, share it, whatever the case is. Great, great sharing with you. I will see you guys in about a week and a half's time. Thank you for following. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye, and I'll see you guys next time.